Hi guys, it's Frankie from Frankie Tech. Good to see you guys again. And I'm here today with my comparison review of the Xiaomi Mi 9 versus the Galaxy S10e. Now by popular demand, this is the comparison you wanted to see the most. As I'm here today now to go down the laundry list, design, display, performance, quick audio test, and then a camera shootout to see which of these two flagship phones is worth your money. So let's have a look. Alrighty, so apologies guys, it's a very dark day here in Hong Kong. So I'll do my best to kind of go through this and let's jump right into design of these phones right here. Right off the bat, we're talking about body and build. So the Mi 9 is definitely the bigger phone. You can clearly see there between these two with a 7.66 millimeter thickness and 173 grams right here. Meanwhile, the S10e is a 7.9 millimeter phone in terms of thickness and 150 grams. And it does feel a little bit light, kind of a little bit lighter than I would like. I think the heft of the Mi 9 and given its body size, it actually feels pretty light as well, but I just like the overall feel of the Mi 9 kind of in the hand a bit better, even though it doesn't fit as well in my hand. Now that's not to say that this size won't be perfect for a certain person. This might be an example though of a phone that may be a little too small for my liking. Even though it's got this really immersive screen on it, I do think they could have kind of just increased the size a little bit. If they had put this up to that Mi 9 SE levels of size, it would have been perfect. Now you see here, the phones are very premium. I give the edge here actually to the Galaxy S10e. It is just a level of fit and finish that I think even the Mi 9 does not reach. And I think the last phone that made me feel this or that felt this good in the hand was the P20 Pro that I tested last year. This aluminum just feels so nice and kind of the edge there is just really well made. Now that's not to say that the Mi 9 feels bad in the hand. It feels really great as well. And you see at the bottom here, there is that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the S10e. That can be a major, major go for you guys if that is what you value. And this S10e has got it, the Mi 9 does not. USB-C on both of these phones. And where the Mi 9 SE has the power and volume rocker, this is where the S10e only has the power button, but it also doubles as your fingerprint scanner. So let's kind of turn that on and off right here. And the fingerprint scanner is pretty quick, as you can see there. And you can actually open it unlocked right there. You see? Looking at the front of these phones, clearly they are just some of the most bezel-less phones that we have today. And the S10e, I think, has done a really good job of utilizing this kind of flat panel and being able to do it with that punch hole, two different kinds of notches here, punch hole versus the teardrop. You may have one that you prefer, but I do like that the punch hole is smaller on this S10e than let's say on the Galaxy 88, A8S. <laughs> That's one word, try to say that five times quickly. <laughs> and that punch hole was a joke. It was just such a huge punch hole. I'm glad they've gotten it down to this size. And I think this kind of is similar to the one on the Honor V20, but I just saw in the stores the S10 Plus and it's kind of more elongated dual camera punch hole and that looks pretty good too. So I think Samsung is doing a really good job here with their just bezels on their phones. And these are much smaller than the ones on, let's say the iPhone XR. In fact, I think even this bottom bezel here is probably smaller than the whole bezel that goes around the iPhone XR, which I think is just looking a little bit dated because of those thick bezels around it. But the Mi 9, as you can see, also has very thin bezels on the sides and on the bottom. Which phone has the smaller bottom bezel? I'll let you be the judge of it. I think I give the slight edge to the Mi 9, but if you really look close, maybe it's the S10e. It's really hard to say. And I do have a screen protector on this Mi 9, waiting to get the official one very soon. And quickly talking about the colors of these phones. The Mi 9, as you know, comes in this beautiful, just beautiful turquoise blue with a holographic effect. And meanwhile, the S10e comes in this almost shimmering light blue pearl, pearl color. And that name of the color, if I'm not mistaken, is Prism White. It is a very striking color, 
and it is really nice, but I just, I, it's not for me is the truth. I think this would really be suited for, I think someone who likes jewelry. And I'm not trying to say that guys can, won't rock this color too. It's a nice, subtle color with a little shimmer to it. But I think I just prefer the holographic look on the Mi 9 a bit better. So if I have to give the design round here though, just because of the slight better fit and finish, I will give it to the Galaxy S10e. Now that's probably controversial because you've heard about how much I like the back and the look of the Xiaomi Mi 9, but Samsung has done something pretty incredible with this phone. I don't know how to describe it to you until you pick one up in your hands. It just feels super premium. I think a lot of it has to do with these metal edges. The tolerances are just really, really good. And it just feels like overall a more expensive product. I don't know why or how that's the case, but it just does. And it's a very slight edge because don't get me wrong, the design of the Mi 9 is still stellar. And I think for a budget flagship, it is ticking all the right boxes right here. So talking about display, and these are also very different in that regard with the Xiaomi Mi 9 with a 6.39 inch Super AMOLED display. It's got 403 PPI here, and it does have Gorilla Glass 6, which is really good, HDR10 and DCI-P3 ready there. Uh, this is a really great panel, similar to the one that was used on the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3. So you can see the white point there, it looks really good. But the S10e, let's face it guys, Samsung is the king of AMOLED and they make the best panels. In fact, they're the panels that are used in almost every big flagship phone, including the iPhone. This Galaxy S10e has a 5.8 inch, 19 by nine aspect ratio. So a little bit different aspect ratio versus the 19.5 on the Mi 9. Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, with HDR10 Plus and an always on display, 438 PPI, so the same screen resolution as this phone, but in a smaller body. And you can just look at the white point on these two phones. Let's go to settings. Both phones look really great here, but I think I give the slight edge to the panel on the S10e. It just has just a really nice white point to it and the screen feels very uniform it just looks great and i'm surprised i'm lavishing all this praise on a samsung phone but you know what samsung does displays amazing and they can really have the pick of the litter in terms of their display quality here and so that's why i think they have been able to put such a great display in this s10e don't get me wrong the Mi 9 has a great panel, but I just don't think it reaches the, the level of the S10e. And here you see me cycling through these photos. Very vivid colors on both of these panels. But something about the look on the S10e just is a little bit more vivid than the one on the Mi 9 here. But don't get me wrong, I think the Mi 9 still does colors very well. Now, as you can see here, this is a first for Frankie Tech looking at the screen modes on a Samsung Galaxy phone. And as you can see with the One UI, they've adjusted now just with two options here, but with a white balance. So if you go more natural, you'll end up with a look that's a bit more kind of basic there. But let's try to get back to where we were. If I go to Vivid though, you see how it changes the look there. It becomes much brighter. And I think that's the Vivid look that everyone loves about Samsung phones. They just make everything pop, and there's even an option in video, I know, for being able to kind of really pop the colors on your video. And speaking of video, let's go have a look at Frankie Tech on both of these phones. And so there you see YouTube playback on both of these phones, and this is what I mean by that kind of booster on the Galaxy S10e. Now, the other thing I've noticed on the S10e is the screen gets bright. And look at that. You go max brightness on both of these screens. This one is not blown out. This one is blown out. And I think that is something to keep in mind if you do want to have the, the AMOLED screen with one of the brightest screens on the market. This S10e is doing a great job of that right here. But I think the colors look pretty good on both phones here. But because of that boost mode on video that you can set up here, I think I give the edge, once again, to the Galaxy S10e in terms of YouTube playback right here. So the S10e is doing really well so far, 
it just stole the design award there slightly from the Xiaomi Mi 9 and has now taken the display round. What else is it going to take here today in this video? And DRM Info, here's another one where the S10e takes it. L1 on this S10e, and this version, if I'm not mistaken, is the Spanish version. One of you guys so adeptly noticed that there was Spanish on the back of the box here. So this is probably the more global version of the S10e, and it looks to me that makes a difference here. L1 for CDM, wide-band CDM security level, whereas it's only L3 here on my version of the Mi 9. But if you do have the global version of the Mi 9, it should be L1. So in that case, those two would be equal right here. And here's an interesting category, performance, specifically in Geekbench. And you guys were kind of talking about this because uh, it turns out, obviously, that the version that I have here is actually a different version of the Galaxy S10e. This is the Exynos version, guys. Uh, Exynos 9820, so that's an octa-core 8 nanometer chip versus the Snapdragon 855, which is a 7 nanometer here on the Mi 9. Now, if you've seen some of these benchmarks, some of these other tests versus these two chips, you'll know that the actual Snapdragon 855 performs a lot better in a lot of those, but in Geekbench, you can clearly see here the single core score of the Exynos 9820 just out blasts, just like destroys the Snapdragon 855. Now, that's not to say single core performance is everything that matters, but clearly you see here in multi-core, the Mi 9 takes it back as well. And so here are the Antutu scores. I just ran them on the Galaxy S10e, previously run on the B9. 365,000 versus 327,000. Now those are both great scores, but it is not to the level of the Snapdragon 855 in the Xiaomi Mi 9. And now talking about battery, and as you can see, I've already tested on the Xiaomi Mi 9 here, but that time of 11 hours and 56 minutes seems a little bit much for uh, what it actually will end up being. Whereas on the Galaxy SNE, you can see here, it is almost just comical how low that is looking right now, three hours and 10 minutes. So I think the result is gonna be somewhere in the middle in the end. Now, in terms of actual capacities, we have 3,300 milliampers on the Mi 9 versus 3,100 on the S10e. And it does have fast battery charging up to 15 watts, whereas the Mi 9, as you saw from that epic charge test, it does have a 27 watt charger that was included in my China version of the phone there, and that was just killer performance within under one hour of charging from zero to 100, I think is one of the most amazing charge sets I've run on the channel. But more importantly to charging is draining. And as you guys know, I did mention it earlier, my drain test is coming up very soon. Both of these phones will be duking it out in the battery drain test coming this weekend. As you guys know, that video takes a long time to produce, so definitely bear with me as I work to get that video together there. But both of these phones will be going against the Mi 9 SE and a fourth mystery phone that I'll be revealing very soon. And we'll see how it goes in that awesome battery drain test, so stay tuned. And here we are with Fortnite on the Mi 9 and the Galaxy S10e. What better way to test two flagships out? So I'm gonna press play on both phones. Let's start this game off on each one here. And I hope I don't run into some issues here playing on both of these phones, as that can be very annoying. And it looks like we are having issues now. So apologies guys, as it seems like for some reason, I would need to create an entirely new Fortnite account to be able to play on both phones. I will do that the next time here, but for now, I'm gonna play just a little bit of Fortnite here on the Galaxy S10e. If you have not seen my previous day six review of the Xiaomi Mi 9, go check it out. That is where I play extensive, and I mean extensive, Fortnite. But so far, this is playing it really well here. I really do like the colors on the S10e's display. Now the one pity here you see, it is cutting off a lot by not including the notched area. And because it's a punch hole, it's losing a lot of screen. And that, my friends, is not the nicest look for a phone. In fact, this almost looks like <laughs> Pixel 2 XL in terms of how big of a bezel it shows on this side here. So that is unfortunate, but in terms of gameplay, I think it's still doing pretty well. So here we are in the bus, and let's fly down now on this S10e. 
And so far, so good. I'm just gonna run around here for a little bit. Oh yeah, nothing like smashing some cop cars. And it looks like I'm just crushing stuff today. Getting my medals. I just love destroying stuff with my axe in this game. <laughs> so you see here the graphics, they look really good. I don't doubt that this S10E will be able to play a great game of Fortnite. And stay tuned guys, I will do a gaming comparison here between all these phones at some point. But in the meantime, let's get back to the comparison here between the Xiaomi Mi 9 and the S10e. And so, I'm not going to do an extensive audio speaker test here, guys, because I've already run it. If you go back to my Xiaomi Mi 9 video, I actually ran that speaker test comparison between these two phones. Go back and check out that comparison there in that video if you want to. But just really quickly here, I'm going to just point out and play... 100% uh, on both of these phones so you can see what I meant from that speaker test. Let's do a quick one right here. And so there you go, and just exactly my findings from the previous test, that the Mi 9 does get a little bit louder, but the S10e speakers just sound great. I was really surprised that the S10e would have such good speakers in it. Generally, I've heard Samsung Galaxy speakers haven't been the greatest, and they're just single bottom firing. So I was really surprised to see that while not as loud, the S10e has just richer, just more kind of textures to the music, and it just sounds better. Whereas the Mi 9, it does get a little bit louder, but at that 100% mark does get a little tinny. So that was my conclusion the last time, and that's my conclusion this time. And now talking about camera, and I've gotten quite a few samples and video to share here with you guys. So let's gonna let's get to it pretty quick here. But just quickly wanted to do a subject matter shot. I got a little car here, Mr. Lions T, that's gonna drive in here, and we're gonna take two quick shots here on both of these phones. Now, if you notice, the interfaces for getting to wide angle are a bit different here. On the Galaxy S10e, you kind of press this swipe out, and then you get. The wide angle and if you keep it there with the two trees you have the standard shot whereas on the Xiaomi Mi 9 you press this button here to go to wide angle and then you just unpress it to get back to normal so let's take two quick shots here with these phones and then look at the samples so first shot here with the Xiaomi Mi 9 and second shot here with the Galaxy S10e. Now both phones have AI camera on, so that may make a difference here, but have a look at these results. And there is some pretty strong lighting here because of my setup. And you know what? I actually thought I was gonna like the colors and just the way the Mi 9 took this shot, but this has kind of been indicative of the entire time shooting here. Look at the detail on the car with the Galaxy S10e compared to on the Mi 9. There is quite a difference in terms of exposure, and I think this is where Samsung and their overexposed shots are helping out in these lighting situations. You can make out more details on the S10e simply because it captures more light in the dark areas. And so that's it for this sample, but have a look at these samples and this video here on the Xiaomi Mi 9 versus Galaxy S10e, and let me know what you think in the comments.
We're here facing video on the Xiaomi Mi 9 and the Galaxy S10e. Shooting in 4K UHD here. S10e is uh, 60 FPS if I'm not mistaken. Looks pretty good. Good stabilization on both. Very nice results on both phones. Give me up in the comments which one you think looks better. This is front facing video on the Xiaomi Mi 9 and the Galaxy S10e. Looks pretty good. Looking at the Mi 9 first, what's up? Now the S10e, how's it going? You gotta look at the viewfinder here. Stop for a second. So many phones, man. So many phones. Colors look pretty good on both. I mean, these are flagship phones, so they should have some really good fun facing video. Hit me up in the comments which one you think looks better. So that's it for this video and my final verdict on the Mi 9 versus the Galaxy S10e. Now, I gotta say, both of these phones bring a lot to the table. I think the Mi 9, in terms of just bang for buck, is an incredible value. You have a bigger screen, you have a really nice screen, you have a great body, just a beautiful back on this phone. The audio quality is good, could be a little bit better, and then the camera, I think, is pretty stellar. But the SNE punches back with a really awesome ergonomic phone here. It's a little bit small, but I think for the right type of user, it may be just what you're looking for. And in terms of audio quality, I think it does outdo the Mi 9 there. And in camera quality, it was a real surprise there to see those nighttime shots of the Galaxy S10e be a little brighter and just a little bit more vivid. I really enjoyed the shots that this took the other day. And so my final verdict on these two phones, if I have to give it to one, which one is it gonna be? It's a close one, but I'm gonna have to go with the Xiaomi Mi 9. And the reason being, not only is this phone a little bit cheaper, but I just think for overall package, this phone provides a bit more from software, from display, from just immersive feel of this phone. I think the camera, while it doesn't perform in certain conditions as good as the one on the S10e, is very flexible with that ultra wide and telephoto lens. You got the triple camera setup on the back. I think battery life has also been a bit better on this Mi 9 over the S10e right here. And last but not least, it's just intangibles. I think you look at the wireless charging, both of these phones do have it, but Xiaomi Mi 9 with its fast charging 20 watt wireless charging and then 27 watt wired charging under one hour, that is just hard to beat. And don't get me wrong, this Galaxy S10e, it may be my new favorite Samsung phone of all time. And I've loved, you know, Samsung phones in the past. I didn't love them for a long time, but this has made me kind of really appreciate what Samsung's tried to do here in the S10e. And if you can pick this phone up for around the price uh, that I got it for, which was just under, just over 5,000 Hong Kong dollars, then you may have a good phone on your hands here. But ultimately, it's just a little bit small for me. Nothing against the size of this phone, but once you've gotten used to this bigger canvas on the Mi 9, it's gonna be hard to go back. But hit me up in the comments, which phone do you think did better here? And that's it for this video. If you liked it, give me that thumbs up. And if you love the content of Frankie Tech, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for future updates. Stay tuned for some more great content coming up pretty soon. A few other phones in the horizon, stay tuned. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and this is where I leave you by saying, this is Frankie Tech, signing off. Y'all have a good one.